بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحن قدرنا بينكم الموت وما نحن بمسبوقين so Allah says in the Quran that نحن we قدرنا بينكم الموت we decreed amongst you or between you death الموت وما نحن بمسبوقين and we will not be overrun or we will not be outmatched. So what it means is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed death and no one can outrun it. Death is a, there's a cycle that we all go through that is happening at every moment from moment to moment of life and death. Death is a reality that exists with us at all times. Sometimes we, when we have a more simplistic view of life, we think of death as something that occurs at the expiration of the physical body. So this is the major death. And everyone will experience that. But there are other types of death that you are experiencing at all times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this universe with varying rules. And there is a system in place in this universe. There are laws in place. Physical laws. Chemical laws. Biological laws. Spiritual laws. All of which are happening concurrently. Some of these laws we understand, some of them we don't understand. As we've progressed in knowledge, we discovered more of them. Prophets came to explain to us spiritual laws and spiritual realities. In a simplistic term, in a simplistic way, we all understand that organisms as a whole die. A cat will one day die, right? A dog will one day die. A human will one day die. It's a simplistic look at death. However, scientists, when they look at things in a more, uh, in a more, exp I guess expert is not the best term to use, but in a more precise manner, there is a cycle of death which is happening all the time. As a person breathes, for example, there are cells which die then new cells are born. It's a very interesting process. If they've done some studies and they've shown that, for example, a person who is, let's say, 10 years old, at the age of 30 or age of 40, the cells have all changed. They've now become a completely different person. All those cells have died and there's, there's new cells that have been replaced. Essentially, if I remember correctly, there's virtually no cells which remain from the 10-year-old to the 30-year-old. So death is an ongoing process. At all times, there's a death, life. Death, life. Death, life. Till finally, one day, the physical body completely dies. The organism fails, shuts down completely. And then that's it. Then you, then you enter into complete death. At the time of complete death, a person is spiritually awakened. 
this cycle of spiritual awakeness at death is also something which is occurring at all times. So as we said, the simplistic view is that you have the cat, the cat dies after a certain number of years, it's dead. The more precise answer is that there's a life and death cycle happening throughout the entire period before that organism fully dies. From the spiritual perspective, the simplistic view is that a person after X number of years dies, their physical body is completely gone, and now they're dealing with the spiritual realities. The more precise view is that there is a spiritual reality unveiling and a death going on at all times. Just the same way that the physical, that, that what's happening on the physical realm. These, these are the ways that the universe operates. These are how things have been set forth. Because of our simplistic understanding of things and our own ignorance, a lot of times we miss a very big part of the picture. What happens, I'll talk about a little bit about what happens at the death that we understand, and then I'll come back to the cycle of deaths that are happening as we go towards this larger death. When we die, when the organism fails and shuts down and it's completely dead, what happens? They define death as the time when the nafs is no longer in, uh, together with the body, okay? together with the physical body. The nafs are the driving forces, the life forces, which connect your soul, essentially, to the physical body. When those are done, those life forces are finished, then the soul is no longer connected to the physical body. And then it's out. At that point, a person is faced with spiritual realities. Up until that point, a person can be masked from spiritual realities. So what happens is, is a person enters into the barzakh, and now they are more aware of spiritual realities than they were when they were attached to the physical body. The physical body prevents a person from seeing some of these realities. The physical realm, which we exist in now, is limited. And when a person is in this physical body, the, their ability to understand is limited. Once they are free from the physical body, their ability to understand and to perceive and to see increases tremendously. So at the time of death, a person is then faced with whatever it is that their soul is prepared or what the reality of their soul is at that point. This is different than the Day of Judgment and inshallah we're going to have a lecture about that. So this is going to be a three-part talk. One part is about death, the other part about Barzakh and the other part about the Day of Judgment. So just for now before we get into what happens in Barzakh, what we want to understand is that at the time of death, realities become clear to the person that weren't clear before. I'll give you some type of examples to make that a bit more understanding. Animals tend to see things more than humans do. So animals are able to perceive more of spiritual realities than humans can, except for humans who are awake, humans who have awakened themselves. A lot of that is due to the fact that animals, although they are animalistic, they are not driven by um, 
they don't have the capacity of aql, so they're not commanded to do right or wrong. Hence, there's a more purity there. So, uh, there's some examples and some narrations. Somebody asked the Prophet. They said that sometimes we see our animals get startled and they run away from nothing. Why is that? He's like, for example, we are shepherding our flock. A shepherd who's moving his sheep. He says, sometimes we see the sheep get really startled and they run away. For no reason, nothing has happened. The Prophet said, he said, that's because they perceive what's happening in Barzakh and you don't. That something is taking place in Barzakh. He gives a specific example of some kind of very severe punishment. And there's a loud noise. Although it's not a physical noise that you hear with this physical ear. But the animal perceives it. It becomes scared and startled. It has a perception. Humans, who are more spiritually awake, perceive many things. They have premonitions. They have uh, intuition. They have other things which they perceive. So at the time of death, when the physical body has died, those blinders which a person had that stopped them from perceiving what's happening in the spiritual realm are completely opened. Now that person sees. They are now faced with a reality of what they are. When we talk about the punishment, and inshallah when we get to the part about Barzakh, we can talk about that in a more uh, deeper manner. But the, the idea of the punishments of the grave are is that the person has created those punishments for themselves. In this world, they, for example, they, they obtained the bad trait of jealousy. Here, in this world, jealousy causes them problems. They burn. They, they get upset. They hate. They're not happy. They're uncomfortable. When they die, the reality of jealousy comes to them as, as, as a more severe punishment. They're being punished now. But that punishment becomes more severe. They are now fully aware of it. They are now confronted with it. This is what happens at the time of the death. All that the person has accumulated is now in front of them. So to give you a better perspective of this, imagine you're conscious and imagine your thoughts. If a person sits alone and sits in a dark room, for example, and contemplates deeply on their thoughts and delves into their own consciousness, this is a taste of like what happens at the time of death. There is no um, silly activities for somebody to be distracted with. There's no worldly pursuits to be distracted with. There's no job to be distracted with. There's no salary or bills to be distracted with. There's no family to be distracted with. There is nothing but the person, themselves, their deeds, and that's it. There's nothing else. There's no, oh, I got to get up and I need to mow my lawn. Nothing. Nothing that can distract a person from their, from their inner thoughts. You can't stop, for example, say, oh, I want to go watch a movie. Nothing. There's nothing left. So, that's what happens at death time. Now, this type of awakening can be really easy or it can be very, very painful and very difficult. For the person who's accumulated good and they've kept themselves clean and pure, then it's a very easy transition. For the person who has corrupted themselves, it's a very difficult transition. And let me pose some examples here to make that more clear. When a person dies, they will lose everything 
And as we said, there is no distraction anymore. If a person in this life loses something, like say they lose a loved one, does it cause them a lot of grief or pain? If they lose some material possession, does it cause them a lot of grief or pain? Eventually, they get over it or they get sidetracked with something else and they forget about it. But when a person dies, they lose everything. That's why they say the pain of death is very difficult for some people, extremely difficult, much more difficult than anything in this life. Everything, all at once. There's no getting it back, and there's no, nothing to replace it. For example, in this world, a person loses their house, they can replace it with another house. They lose a friend, they can replace it with another friend. Whatever is lost can be replaced. Once a person goes to the final death, there's no replacing. If in this life, when one goes through difficulty or loses something, if the way that they cope with it is through being agitated and frustrated and then just distracting themselves with something different till they forget about that, that, that agitation or that, that frustration, then they're going to have a very difficult time at the time of death. Very difficult time. But if a person in this life recognizes and understands that everything is going to leave them, they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what they have and they get inner tranquility. That means if they lose something or they gain it, it doesn't matter. They're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either way. They have real tawakkul. They have real sabr. Then just how it doesn't hurt them here, the transition to death will be very easy. In fact, it will be welcome and they'll love it. So at, that's what happens at the time of the physical death. The body's done, the person, the soul has detached, and now they're facing what they have to face. This is a limited perception of death. But as we said, scientists will say, okay, the, an organism physically dies, however, it's dying all the time. It's going through a cycle of life and death continuously until the organism is fully dead. It's the same spiritually. If a person understands it, they're going through constant deaths all the time. Every time you lose something, every time you go through a difficulty, every time you're tested, it's like death. You're, you're losing something from this dunya. Because the death, you lose the whole dunya. Continuously throughout your life, you're continuously losing from this dunya, then you get something back. You lose and you get something back. You lose and you get something back. The one that Allah loves, He causes him to lose a lot in the dunya. This is something, it's a, this is a, a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the person starts to understand that and cultivates that, then they're continuously in the cycle of death. And they can spiritually grow. If they don't, then they're not spiritually growing. All they're getting is pain and anguish. And then when they finally die, it's going to be even worse. There's no escape from this cycle. Nobody can escape from this. Not a prophet, not a kafir, not a king, not a poor person. Nobody can escape just the same way that Allah is saying, نَحْنُ قَدَرْنَا بَيْنَكُمَ الْمَوْتْ وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَسْبُقِينَ This idea of death is unescapable. Continuous death all the time, unescapable. The, the way to spiritual growth is through death. There's no other way 
a person can grow spiritually. It's impossible. Impossible. If there was another way, we would see it. Death is the only way a person can transition into the higher realms of reality. The physical body dies, the person enters into the barzakh, which is a higher reality. Then, inshallah, we'll have a chance to talk about resurrection, what that means. But death is the only way that a person can graduate and move on. And dying to the dunya is the only way somebody can move spiritually. There's no other possible way. You just can't. You can't do it. Masha Allah, wala masha an nas. Masha Allah, wa in karihan nas. So Allah, so we have this du'a. It says that it's how God wants it to be. And it's not how man wants it to be. It's how God wants it to be, even if mankind hates it. Even if he doesn't like it. There's no changing reality. No one can change it. Not prophet, not even prophet. Even prophet had to go through the same exact thing that everyone else has to go through. There's this cycle and it happens. Now, how can one deal with it? How does one understand it? How does one grow through it? How does one prepare for death? We have a number of narrations that talk about how you can prepare for death. So all of you are probably familiar with these narrations. Doing your, 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 your salat, paying your, paying your zakat, paying sadaqah, being good to your parents, all of these different actions that you need to do to prepare and make death easier for you. Salat al-layl, reciting Quran, fasting, mustahab and wajib fast, all the things, going to hajj, umrah, ziyarat. So you're aware of all of these things. The, the key is, is for example, many of us are aware of this. We've been aware of this since we were children. We've been, been told these things since we're like eight years old. Now, X amount of years later, we keep hearing the same thing. But maybe we, we feel like we haven't spiritually grown. Because we're waiting or we're thinking that those things are only preparing us for that final death. And that's it. We, we have a very limited understanding and limited view of religion and of life. These actions help you prepare for the innumerable number of deaths that are taking place from now to the time that you actually die. That this consistent and ongoing cycle that never ends. How does one benefit from it? When, for example, you lose something. And everyone will lose. You're going to lose a loved one. You're going to lose economically. You're, you're going to lose your health. Whatever it is that you have, you're going to lose it. Maybe one day you'll gain something back, then you're going to lose more. As time progresses, you will just continuously lose more and more and more and more. How do you gain benefit from it? It's the same things. You just refocus your effort and refocus the thinking. If you pray on time, you do all these actions, then every time you lose something, it becomes easier. You start to refocus the thinking. Okay, I lost something. Oh, okay, it's like death. It's a type of death. Spiritual growth occurs. Spiritual growth the reality of spiritual growth is that it brings a person complete tranquility, peace. The best gift Allah subhanahu wa brings to the person is that the person becomes ravi. They become satisfied. What does that mean? In any situation, they're satisfied. In any situation, they're okay. Doesn't matter. Whether God gives them or God takes away. They have true reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have patience. They have tawakkil. And it doesn't matter what happens. Whether it's perceived as good or as perceived as bad from people, it's all the same. 
It's all the same to the person. That's, that's the, the true gift of, of God's pleasure. When a person actually becomes religious, that's what they get. That's the real gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the treasure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for people. Sometimes we have this limited view, oh God's going to give me all these great things, big house in paradise, things here, all these different mates, those are all good and great. But imagine, true, true and pure satisfaction. Real satisfaction that you're always satisfied. You're not left wanting and desiring. You're not left upset and anguished. No turmoil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has made this system of death so that we can gain this aspect. Allah says He created life and death to test us, to see who does the best amongst us. To test. So that we can grow. We want to get past the thinking that, okay, death is something that's going to happen 50 years from now, 60 years from now, 70 years from now, and I, I, I need to just be ready for that. That's very important. But a person has to understand there's this cycle is going on all the time, consistently, all the time. What's going on? I'm dying and I'm growing. I'm dying and I'm living. There's a cycle of resurrection even going on. That's for a different uh, lecture. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a lot of examples in the Quran about this cycle. He, he mentions about how, for example, he says, do you see the earth when it's barren, and then Allah sends down the rain, and then life pops out again. And then later, it goes back to being dead. Right? This is a cycle we see all the time. You look outside. Land has, as, as the seasons change, for example, you have varying plants that sprout up, fruits that grow out, and then they die. Then later they come back. Then they die. And then they come back. And then they die. And then they come back. And it's consistently and continuously happening. It never stops. The Prophet said that the best thing that a person can do for themselves is continuously to remember death. Always, always remember death. Two ways you can understand this. It means always remember the physical death, but it also means continuously think about death at every moment. That there's a death happening at every moment. That all that you lose, it's like a type of death to prepare you for that real death. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard. It's going to be extremely painful. If you, it's like Imam Ali Islam says in Dua Qumir. If I can't cope with these small punishments and difficulties of this life, which are temporal and limited, how will I deal with the difficulties of that life? which don't have a limit. They're not temporal. The idea of physical space and time is gone. It, doesn't, it only exists now with, with these physical limitations. At that time, it's gone. So when you have a difficulty, how will you be freed from it? See? Then at that time, it becomes really hard. Here, in this world, one of the benefits of living in this world, one of the benefits of, of having the dunya and the physical body is that you can purify. You can clean the process. The, the punishment here is temporal. The difficulty is temporal. If you grow now, it becomes much easier. If you understand it now. At the other time, after death that happens, then you're left with Allah essentially having to force it out of you. Which can take eons. Who knows how long it can take. It's a very diff different reality. Death is not something that, that we want to limit our understanding of. And another thing that we also understand, want to understand is that 
death is also a mercy for us. And we don't want to look at it, you know, they have this, people have this perspective, oh, death is a very horrible and terrible thing, and it's a scary thing. It's not like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very merciful. And He has created death to be mercy for believers. Only the person who is ignorant thinks that death is something that's going to be harmful for them. For the mu'min who's prepared himself, death is a beautiful thing. Malik al maut Israel is their friend. You see, see for example, uh, Qasim alayhi salam, his, his uncle asked him, Imam Hussein asked him, how do you view death? He said, to me, death is, is sweeter than the honey. Because he understands that this death is mercy. It's a mercy for believers. At all the times, it's what allows you to grow. It's what allows you to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without it, you can't. It's important to get closer even to the angels. And I'll end here. Something that you can do. I mean, we're aware of so many different actions that we can do that help us. I'll give you another one that sometimes is neglected. One of the ways that a person can repair themselves better for death is building a relationship with Israel, Malik al Maut. How does that how does a person build a relationship with an angel? It's possible. I'll give you one example, inshallah, you can do research to find more. Imam Sajjad in Sahifa to Sajjadiyah. So this is a book of du'as. The second du'a, I believe it's the second du'a of the book. It's where the Imam praises and speaks to the angels. There's a reason why Imam does this. Imam builds a relationship with angels. There's a conversation in this du'a that Imam has with varying angels, one of them being Malik al Mount. And this is what Imam is teaching us. To converse with this agent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can become your close associate and friend to help you through all these stages of death, including the great death that all of us will face. Sallallahu alayhi wa